Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. Tonight we're going to go to Scotland. It's been a while since we went to Scotland. I think the last review we did was Pickerings. Yeah. So we are going to do this gloriously red bastard tonight. This is Red Door Highland Gin. I've heard nothing but good things about this gin. I'm hoping uh, that'll that'll prove right. <laughs> We're coming in at a 45%. We are a grain-based gin. We don't know what grain, but it's grain. And our known botanicals are angelica, coriander, heather, juniper, of course, lemon, orange, rowan berry, rowan berry, okay, and sea buckthorn. Ooh, I like sea buckthorn. We've had that in our Fisher's gin, and it gave it that real salinity taste to it. The Ben Ramach Distillery is a famed Scotland uh, or Scotch producer. Um, the distillery dates back to the end of the 19th century and is well known for its Red Doors, hence the name Red Door Highland Gin. Red Door Highland Gin is the first gin produced by this distillery and its history. It is a London dry gin. It's distilled in a copper pot from a base of grain. They use a gin basket. We have to do our, our first uh, Knock test. Ready? Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna do it with my hand on this side. You know, it's I. It's not a great caliber of glass. I'd be afraid of dropping this one. That doesn't mean anything though. You know, that's just that's just my way of uh, testing out their marketing team. <laughs> All right, let's let's do this. All right, man. Look at that natural cork right there. Set in a plastic topper that is copper. <laughs> and that rhymed. All right. I'm using this guy because the Malfi one the other night <laughs> not only was delicious, but the shot I took was probably four in one. Yeah. Mmm. This is beautiful. It's like you, you know this gin right away. There's the juniper, very pronounced. 45%, so I would say that's due to the alcohol then and whatever sweetness is left. Cheers, salute. Mmm. Mmm. a lot going on all really good stuff um, it's very bold it's bracing it's it's a burn it's a good burn it is traveling at the right amount of speed it's the right amount of size it's just what you want I mean I think maybe the red bottle too is given a little bit more you know how visuals do that right the angelica and the juniper are like like that right away um, th there's like a bitterness to the orange. Is it Seville orange? It tastes like Seville orange to me. That's what I'm getting at the end. Um, but like I said, that punch of juniper is there and it's really, really nice. Um, I think a martini or a gin and tonic is definitely in order with this. Like a, there's a very long, dry finish at the end, which wraps it up really nice. I can tell, I can tell that they put a lot into this. They, they, they must have, um... They had a gin basket, I know that, so they, I would think that they would individually distill each botanical. That's because I, I taste very pronounced botanicals. Um, the juniper is by itself, the citrus, like I said, it's like Seville oranges. The heather, I didn't even know what heather tastes like, but I know it tastes good because I could taste it now. The sea buckthorn, I, I definitely am um, getting a little bit of that salinity. So we're gonna do our standard uh, G and T here. Two ounces here. Tree of Fever. Nice effervescence. Mm. You know. Okay. I think it was better neat. <laughs> with with the tonic, it's it's bringing out a lot of that ethanol, that moonshine 
taste. You know, the corn, even though this is a grain-based gin, I, it tastes like corn to me. There's, it tastes like there's a corn base in there. Maybe what I'm tasting is that heather, and that's, you know, close to that aspect. A grass is a grass is a grass, right? Well, I got grapefruit, I got lime, I got some lemon. Let's see how this goes, all right? So loogie baskets. Better. I'm gonna add a little Angostura, orange, and a reggae. Cheers. Mm. Right there. The Angostura brings in the herbaceous, herbaceous note that I think gin in this caliber needs. And when I say caliber, it's a higher end gin, and I can taste that definitely. There's, there's, there, they did something with their uh, distillation. Probably, like I said, they probably do individual distillation and then combine at the end. Now, the only drawback I have on this is the corn moonshine uh, base taste to it, um, but that could easily be remedied with citrus and some Angostura. So if I say, if you're making a GNT with this uh, gin, I'd say go all out with the citrus, go Spanish style, and just do what I did here. That you're, it'll make it, it'll make it enjoyable. And then again, if you're one of those people that really enjoy moonshine and the corn base, this is a gin for you. This might be a good gin to get into the gin game for you. Anyway, it was fun going back to Scotland tonight, and uh, uh, I hope you all uh, have a great uh, rest of your night. All right, well, from me to you, to you to me, everyone out else up there in this great, beautiful land of ours from sea to shining sea, I wish you a good night, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. See you back.